Hey Saints, what's going on? Welcome back to Love Has a Name YouTube channel. My name is Brian and today is April 9th, 2024, the day after the solar eclipse, the day after the beginning of the biblical month of Nisan. So we have crossed over. Something I woke up hearing yesterday, something to deal with crossover. I couldn't remember if it was crossover uh, event, crossover moment, I can't remember, but the word that did come to me very clearly was crossover. As I was waking up, I heard the Spirit say. So this has already been confirmed through Johnny Enlow on his episode number 101 with Elijah Streams on Rumble, which I just happened to see today, Tuesday. I didn't even know that. So thank you, Lord, for confirming that we've crossed over into a powerful a new season, the beginning of God's awakening. And so there are wonderful things coming. And I hope you are excited, even as I am excited. Amen. Tonight's video is going to be a prophetic word from Lana Vosser. I felt led to come on over and release uh, one of her words. So the next one that we have in line is dated April 2nd, 2024. And this word has the title of i heard the lord say come into the upper room my fire is falling for the new frontiers praise god so let's take a moment to enter into the presence of the lord father jesus holy spirit Thank you for this wonderful day you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for the crossover. Thank you, Lord, for this new biblical year. Thank you, Lord, for the confirmations, for the revelation, for the insight, for the prophetic words, for the prophetic utterances. Thank you, Lord, for the prophetic dreams and the visions and the downloads. <laughs> Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your mercies new every single day. Lord, I'm grateful. I'm sure your people here, they are grateful. They're telling you now how grateful they are. Thank you, God, for your abundant grace. Thank you, Lord, that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, whom who loves us. And thank you, God, that you work all things for our good, because we love you and we are called according to your purposes. Thank you, Lord. We ask you to have your way. We give you free reign and permission, Lord, as if you needed it. But in a sense, yes, you want our agreement. So we invite you, Lord, take over, take control. You know best, we yield to you, precious Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. I can feel your weighty presence. Do any of you, any, uh, anyone else out there feeling his presence, let me know. In particular, if you, um, if you don't normally, and maybe I'll say it this way, keep it in the mic, sorry about that. In case you don't normally feel his presence, but you did just now, um, let, let us know in the comments, amen. I would love to rejoice with you, amen. And that is something that is on my life, so I know the presence of God is being transmitted and transferred freely from the Lord because he loves you, amen. All right, here is the prophetic word from Lana Vassar. Make sure you look in the description because I have the information on how you can learn more about Lana Vosser's ministry, all right? And you sow into her ministry as you feel led as well. All right, here's the prophetic word, and it begins saying this. Lana Vosser says, Recently I heard the Lord say, Come up, or come into the upper room. My fire is falling for the new frontiers. Oof, let's put that in the comments. New frontiers ahead. 
and the word continues. There is a, whoa, there is a weighty invitation from the Lord right now <laughs> to the people of God to come into the upper room, the place of prayer and waiting on him like never before, for his fire is falling for the new Ooh. Oh, that was different, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> His fire is falling for the new frontiers. <laughs> oh, and I just release that to your people, Father, in Jesus' name. Oof. There is a deep place of encounter awaiting God's people right now, where there is a fresh commissioning taking place in the upper room for the new frontiers that are before the people of God. There is an invitation to leave behind the noise and distractions and come into the upper room for the fire of God is falling and the spirit of God is about to fall in such power. It will cause everything that can be shaken to be shaken. Whoa, that right there. Let me just pause. Even that right there is a confirmation. We've been hearing about shaking coming right all right i guess there's a dog somewhere barking he's in agreement praise god the lord showed me says lana mighty deliverances that are taking place in the upper room the spirit of god falling in such power there is sudden deliverances taking place there is sudden healing taking place there is sudden alignment taking place the fog is suddenly breaking time is suddenly being restored vision is suddenly increasing oh lord yes i received them all but i definitely received that one of vision lord not only physical i'll take the physical but oh yes lord the spiritual the spiritual vision the spiritual vision the eyes of my heart and understanding Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. You just want to give and give and give and give, and we cannot outgive you. Thank you, God. The word continues. Lana says, I heard the Lord say, in order for my people to move into the new frontiers, they must be in the upper room to receive the fresh fire. <laughs> if you feel led, type fresh fire in the comments. When the Lord spoke, Oh, fresh fire. I felt everything shake in the spirit. There is fresh fire the Lord is releasing upon his people that come into the upper room of prayer and waiting upon him that is going to be the fresh fire for the pioneering that is before them. All right. Subheader. Answer the call to the upper room and receive his fresh fire for this new apostolic era. The urgency to answer the call to the upper room gripped me, Lana says. I felt the longing of the heart of the Lord so strongly. Where you are going, where we are going, we have never been before. Mm, that excites me, saints. <laughs> where the Lord is sending his people in this new as apostolic age, the age of the kingdom. Whoa, confirmation. Flip, flip the words around. It's the kingdom age, the age of the kingdom. Hear how all the, all the prophets and prophetic voices are hearing the same thing from the Lord? Thank you, Lord. We haven't been before. And I heard the Lord say, you cannot go as you are. What is required for the journey ahead requires a fresh baptism of fire. Lord, yes, please. I receive it. It requires a fresh impartation of faith. I receive it, Lord. It requires the place of fresh encounters with the Lord. I receive it, Lord. It's the place of stepping completely and totally into the new, to move into where he is going. It's a place 
or it's a complete shedding and shaking off of the old. The encounters with Jesus in the upper room are going to be revolutionary. Wow, Lord, I just want to speak that statement upon your people, Lord, so that they may encounter you, Father, for I know that encounters completely solidify my faith and have caused me to have such a deep trust in you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release as your people set themselves apart. Oh, yes, that is another definition of this season of being set apart. They set themselves apart to have time with you. Lord, I agree with you that you may release encounters with Jesus that will revolutionize their lives, their walks with you. I release that by faith, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, Lord. The encounters with Jesus in the upper room are going to be revolutionary. It is the place where the Lord is going to download his wisdom and teach his people his ways and give them understanding of his ways. Oh, Lord, I love understanding. I will take as much as you, you'll give me, Lord. Uh, we have a confirming scripture here. Psalm 119, verse 24. Oh, look at that. Verse 24 in the year 2024. Why not? The Lord's been doing <laughs> a lot of confirmation with numbers this year. In this encounter... Lana says, I saw the new frontier ahead, the uncharted territories. There was a keyhole to be passed through to enter into these new frontiers. And I asked the Lord, what is the key? And I heard him say, it's the upper room. Let's pause. Let's put that in the comments. The key to enter into the new frontiers is the upper room. We continue. Everything that is needed will flow in and from the upper room. In this season of unprecedented acceleration, pioneering and extending and building the kingdom of God with him, look at that, co-laboring, even co-creating, yes, it requires much prayer and fasting and waiting and lingering with the Lord. Wow. He was, he was ministering this very thing to me. A few hours ago, I was sitting right here at the edge of this couch, and I sat still for about 40 minutes, and I typed in my phone anything I heard in the Spirit, and then I sat for an, another 20 minutes, and he was just reminding me reminding me reminding me the more time we spend in the presence of the lord being still allowing ourselves to kind of marinate to where his presence is felt and sensed and then we just sit in that presence basking in the presence of god little by little we are being changed from faith to faith change from glory to glory. The more we spend in his mist, the more of him that gets on us and within us, the more of him from within that is also awakened and comes forth. And so the more time we spend with him, the more we will shift and be transformed to be like him. Wow, awesome. Awesome. And the, even the scriptures say we shall see him as he is and we shall be like him. Mm -mm -mm. Devil doesn't want that. Religious spirit doesn't either. So don't let it bother you because <laughs> it's not the Holy Spirit being bothered in you. It's another spirit. Thank you, Lord. And so the word continues. It is the season to run, but it is, but it is the season to run with the Lord, coming from the upper room. The saints are going to be empowered by the Spirit of God like never before. 
Oof, we'll take that, Lord. The fire of God is going to come upon the people of God like never before, bringing a refining, a strengthening, a purging, and a purifying to run in holiness and truth. The fire of his presence is going to come upon the people of God in this new era in such a way that the burning ones are going to be sent forth into the earth to release the fire of his presence and his power, ushering in the greatest demonstration of his power and revelation of his glory that the church has ever seen. But there is a call to the upper room in such a weight I have not felt before. Wow. All right, guys, one more. Um, oh, a few more sections. All right, we'll just keep it going. Hallelujah. Subheader, look into my eyes and see the age ahead. In this encounter, I saw Jesus standing before me, and his eyes were like flames of fire. And he spoke. Oh, he spoke. Look into my eyes and see the age ahead. Wow. And then the scripture, Revelation 19, 12 is cited here. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he has a name written that no one knows but himself. The words began to come out of my mouth. There are encounters with his eyes in the upper room. There are encounters with his eyes in the upper room. Oh, let's type that in the comments. I began to weep as I saw him. The revelation of Jesus Christ opening up and exploding in the upper room. The whole room was full of the bright, shining light of his glory. The Lord spoke again. The revelation of my glory and the revealing of who I am in this new apostolic age is going to mark Lord, I just want to, let me just high five an angel, a saint, anybody in the heavenly realm right now, because <laughs> the Lord is confirming that word, Mark. Hallelujah. Saints, give yourselves freedom to just laugh and be silly and goofy as I am being. I am literally just being myself. Literally just being myself. And that comes because... I know how loved and accepted I am by the Lord. I don't have to perform. I just have to be me in Him. You also are 100% fully loved, fully accepted by God. He's already made you righteous. You don't even have to work for it. You don't have to do a single thing. <laughs> you don't even have to obey to earn His righteousness. You simply have to receive what He's already done for you that the righteousness may be imputed into you because of what Christ did. It literally is that easy. Amen? So, receive that as just a word for yourself, right? So, the confirmation the Lord just gave us, praise God. He said, the revelation of my glory and the revealing of who I am in this new apostolic age is going to mark <laughs> my people and transform my people will take it, Lord. Do whatever you want. It is the great undoing. It's the reformation in the revealing of who I am. The Lord spoke. In the upper room, you will be marked by love. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. wow. Okay, Saint, we got to write that out in the comments. In the upper room, we shall be marked by his love. Oh, you will be marked, oh man, more, by the fire of my love again. Lord, do it. Do it in Jesus' name. I see upper rooms, Lana says, all over the earth, filled with people on their faces, crying out, weeping, undone, groaning at the revelation of Jesus. Undone by the weight of his glory and power. Oof. In the revealing of who I am is the invitation to see me and look into my eyes and see the age ahead. 
and to walk in my wisdom and my ways. He spoke again. Out of the encounters with me in the upper room will come the greatest divine innovations of the new era. The, or in the encounters with me in the upper room, my people will have ears for the new era. Wow. Oh, somebody type the greatest divine innovations will come from the upper room. Whoa. The word continues. It's in looking straight into the face of Jesus. In these encounters with the Lord in the upper room, that the revealing of who he is in greater ways will explode. I see the upper rooms being filled with his glory and light exploding out of windows. Supernatural manifestations in the natural of his light being seen through windows and people being drawn in the natural to see what this light is exploding from physical buildings and rooms being drawn in and coming to know Jesus. It will happen in houses, in churches, in buildings. His glory and light will be physically seen. It is in the upper room that encountering Jesus and looking in his eyes that the revelation of, his, of this apostolic age will come. The revelation of his kingdom age will come by looking into the face of Jesus, looking into his eyes, feasting on the word as he is the word. Remember John 1.1, 1, 1, right? As I looked closer in his eyes, I could see flames of fire, and I could see pathways and blueprint strategies. In his eyes, I could see wisdom. Mm. Oh, I could see his ways. In his eyes, I could see glimpses of what was to come in this kingdom age. He spoke again, if my people would just stop, linger, seek, and pray in this new era, and set aside distraction, they will see what is to come in me in greater ways. Leave behind your mind of what you think it should be like or how it should be. Just be with me and you will see. Be with me and you will see and rise up as the eagle. Man, what a beautiful word, and it's not done. <laughs> I know, you thought it was done with what I was saying. Nope, but we're almost done. Subheader, the commissioning of the eagles will take place from the upper room. Those words shook me deeply. The commissioning of the eagles will take place from the upper room. He will send out the eagles from the upper room filled with fire. Marked by the revelation of Jesus, eyes that see with prophetic vision and clarity for this new apostolic area. Sorry, this new apostolic era. I then looked at the eyes of the eagles and their eyes blazed with heavenly sight. In the upper room, in looking in the eyes of Jesus, the one whose eyes were like flames of fire, they had received such an upgrade of sight in the spirit. Mm, Lord, I take it. I receive that. They were being sent forth with a heavenly insight and hindsight for this new era. I heard him speak again. These eagles will be sent forth to uncover and reveal my truth. Oof. Daniel 2.22 says, um, or let me just read this. These eagles were being sent forth with eyes of Daniel 2.22. Lord, that's my number, so this scripture is for me, so I take it and I receive it in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. <laughs> I literally, that was literally a prayer, right, in, in your midst. That's literally how I talk to the Lord. And if anyone um, out there, you know, 
by chance or whatever, you may think that's disrespectful, brother. Let me just tell you, not when you know the one you're speaking to. Okay? You only think it's disrespectful if you hear if you if you are judging by the outward. See, God is judging by the heart. He knows the intent and motive of my heart, and he knows when I say it, I say it with love and with childlike faith and with joy. And because of that, and that is simply because of the relationship I have with him. And he's not offended. Amen. So don't judge by the outward appearance, even as he told Samuel when David was being pointed out to him. Even God told him, man judges by the appearance, but God looks at the heart. Amen. I hope that helps you. I hope that didn't offend you. The truth is for you to grasp. And if you're willing to receive it, it will make you free. But if you reject it, if you resist it, simply because you want to be right, that's pride. And you're already on the wrong path there. Amen. Same as Lucifer. But hey, just, just pointing it out. You don't have to be there, though. You can just humble yourself and say, Lord, I'm willing to learn and willing to listen. And if you're still not sure, take it to him and hear from him. All right. But you have to believe that you can hear from him. The word of God cannot be your only source. It cannot be your, your ultimate. Um, how can I say this? So you understand. Yes, the word of God is infallible and we trust the Lord. But these are the scriptures. But the living word, Jesus himself wants to have a relationship with you. And so you, you need to understand that he wants to speak to you face to face. That's what Jesus died to give us. Um, to bring us back in fellowship with the Father. Amen. And it's a process and we're all in a different spot, but you got to believe it. Because if I'm talking from experience and you're talking from just scripture or rather your understanding of scripture, with all due respect, the things of the spirit are always greater than the things of the carnal mind, which is one's interpretation of the scripture. OK, you got to experience it to truly know it, but it's available to you. Amen. Wow, Lord, that was a little mini sermon all in itself. Praise be the Lord. So back to the word. These eagles were being sent forth with eyes of Daniel 2.22. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells with him. That's Daniel 2.22. <laughs> These eagles were going forth with such wisdom, discernment, and divine insight and hindsight that they were going forth to uncover that which is darkness and to reveal truth, his truth to bring forth the establishment of truth, heavenly truth in this new era. They were going forth with prophetic insight and hindsight to bring alignment and to herald the truth of God's word. Subheader. The watchman anointing will increase from the upper room. From the upper room, the watchman anointing is going to increase more than ever. Ooh, amen. Everybody just stretch your hand out and pray for one another, but include Diana Larkin because remember her channel is a watchman's journal. Amen. And let's decree that everyone whom you're praying for by faith, it could even be yourself. Go ahead and lay one hand on yourself and extend the other for everyone else, <laughs> including Diana Larkin. Oh, yes, for me, if you don't mind as well. And just say the watchman anointing. The watchman anointing is going to increase over you more than ever. Oh, we receive it, Lord. I thank you. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Holy Spirit, you're just hanging out here because I felt the heat this entire time in reading this word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being with us with us. Amen. The word continues. The heralding of the watchman is going to get louder in this hour, in prayer, intercession, in proclamation to bring the body of Christ into a greater position of victory and movement from defense to offense. Ezekiel 3.17 says, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, hear a word from my mouth and give them warning from me. Subheader. It is the shaking of Acts <coughs> of Acts 4.31. All right. 
the last, this is the last subheader. And when they prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. All right, that's Acts 4.31. This is the hour of his power. This is the era of being reintroduced to the power of God. This is the era of the days of Acts and beyond. His words surrounded me. It's the era of mighty Acts. The era of my outstretched arm. The fresh encounters with Jesus, the fresh impartation of faith and empowerment of the Holy Spirit is happening in the upper room. As his people wait upon him, the Lord showed me many will be dazzled by the season of opportunity and pursuing fame for their name. Mm -mm -mm. And putting their hands to much for the Lord, but the breath of God is not upon their works. Let me just summarize. They're not being led by God. They're doing things out of their own desire, but they're doing it rather more for themselves than for God. Lord, may we never be like that, Lord. Keep us, deliver us from our own selves, Lord. Yes. By the way, that's one of the best prayers you can say. I've been saying that statement for many, many years. Lord, deliver me from myself. It could be, it could be that you know a certain weakness, a certain temptation, in a certain area, or, <clears throat> or maybe you feel like a little bit of fear about something, anxiety, and you just sometimes you feel like you're not, you may not be strong in a certain situation or whatnot, and it, it's okay. It happens to all of us. That's something that I that I pray. Another thing that I learned from Kevin Zeta is the Lord taught him one of the best prayers you can ever pray is help. <laughs> the, the end. <laughs> Start your prayer. Help. Amen. Okay, pretty much. Okay. Now, obviously, you don't do it in a religious fashion. I was just trying to <laughs> show you uh, the way you would tell a child, you know, once upon a time, the end. Basically, along the lines of that. Help. You are saying with your heart and with your words when you say those words to god you're saying i need you you're saying i'm dependent on you you're saying i can't do it by myself you're saying i won't do it by myself you are speaking humility and god loves that and another prayer that i've learned from kevin zeta is have mercy on me so simple but it's powerful because you are saying oh lord Again, I need you. You see, when a person walks in arrogance and pride, they, they're walking all, you know, chest out and head up and, and there's such arrogance and pride. And once again, need I remind us all that Lucifer was kicked out of heaven for pride. So don't you think God hates pride? Absolutely. So we don't want to be like that. Humility. Oh, man, humility. God loves humility. I'm, I'm not just telling you because the scripture says so. For he resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. And if you humble yourself in, in due time, God will exalt you. Yes, I know. Those are scriptures. But I'm telling you how much he loves humility from experience. And if I may say so, Lord, for your glory and only by your grace from a lifestyle. Live a lifestyle of a humble state of heart and mind, okay? I emphasize the heart and mind. Why? Because you can still be humble and still be abounding in the blessings of God. You can be driving a luxury car. You can have a very nice home. Maybe you'll have a small home, but you have very, very fancy furniture. <laughs> Whatever you want. It, honestly, it doesn't matter because when you think about it, our Father's pavement in heaven is gold. Hello, gold. Gold, the most precious thing here on this earth, that is used for the streets, the pavement, the asphalt in heaven. Our God doesn't lack. 
He is everything. Everything we need is in him. We should have no issues with that. As long as you don't love money, you love God first. And, you know, that's why. And the Lord had to renew my mind in this. All right. Because there are people who uh, who serve the Lord and they have very nice houses, even very big houses. And yes, they may have a jet. And yes, they may have a, a mansion. <coughs> Yes, they may have multiple cars. And guess what? I used to not understand and I criticized out of ignorance. And I, I thank you, Lord, for forgiving me for that. Um, and even though, and hear me, okay, because I'm not neglecting that there are some who have, who, have, um, who have done wrong with things that God has given them and done things for money. Okay, I know that there are some, but we're not focused on them. And to be honest, what, to be honest, what is it to me? Meaning, have I authority over this servant or that servant who's done that? No. So I should get out of my flesh and stop letting it bother me. Okay. Um, it doesn't bother me, but I'm talking about to help you all out indirectly. Don't let it bother you. You are not God. You didn't call that person to serve you. Do Should we hate it? Yes. Should you pray for them? Yes. Instead of criticizing them. But then realize there are some who have been blessed because they have been so upright and so in love with Jesus and perhaps you don't even know what they do in secret and I'm talking about good things I'm talking about the giving and the sowing and the praying and the praying in tongues I've always wondered when I was going to say this and I feel the Lord having me say this right now so I may never say this again so listen up I did not know this about a man, about a specific man of God who has a lot of wealth. I didn't know it until his spiritual son said it on YouTube. And because of that, I feel like I can now say it. <clears throat> the reason I want to share this with you, and I hope you're listening, is because we need to break this mentality of poverty and this mentality of thinking that having little is is honorable to God. Uh, no, it is not. But a religion has taught us this. Okay. So I'm only going to say this once and I'm going to finish the, the last few words, last few sentences here. Kevin Zadai, a wonderful, wonderful man of God, who many of you know and love. He said this. And when he said this, I knew that it was true before the Lord. The Lord confirmed it for me. And then I even heard um, so Kevin said, I said this, <clears throat> he said, do you want to know why his spiritual father, Jesse Duplantis is so blessed financially and prosperous? He's, and I remember Kevin said, I saying this, he said, he's not going to tell you this. And so I will. And he said, when nobody knew what he was doing, he would pray and pray and pray in tongues constantly, constantly, constantly. So much so that the Lord would reveal um, his will and the Lord led him and showed him how to invest in the stock market many, many years ago. I'm talking decades ago. So much so that because of his heart for God and his commitment to pray in the spirit to get to know, as he, as Jesse Duplantis has said it before, he just wanted a God he could talk to. And guess what? All the world, especially the Christian world, myself included, in the past, <coughs> judged him the wrong way. And all this time, he was being true to God. And so God revealed to him how to invest. And I'm going to say this just once, and I'm not going to say it again that I know of. The Lord prospered him so much that he became a billionaire. Okay? with a B, a billionaire. <clears throat> a couple of months later, I heard Jesse Duplantis, um, and I don't normally watch him, but I felt led that day, and I was watching a few videos, and because I had grown with the Lord, I had learned to discern, and I was like, oh my Lord, Jesse Duplantis, the things he are, he's saying, he could not know unless he has an intimate relationship with the Lord. He has some really, really deep revelations and truths <clears throat> And he did say 
And of course, he's got the anointing of joy. That's one of the, the anointings he has on his life, as well as the anointing of increase. Whew. Wonderful testimonies. I've seen him prophesy. I've seen him pray in tongues. I've seen him hear from the Lord. I've heard his testimonies. Honestly, if you open your heart after what I'm saying, and you go and through this lens of what I'm saying, <coughs> you'll go and listen. You will see that perhaps you also were wrong in how you viewed him. All right. Um, so lastly, I'll say that uh, in that video, in one of these videos, I saw Jesse Rupanis, and he also confirmed what Kevin Zeta had said, what I had heard months before. And he said his entire church is paid off and he doesn't lack for anything. And he'll say constantly, I'm not boasting. I'm just, I give, I give God the glory. It's the truth. The Lord uh, led him on how to invest. So he literally confirmed what Kevin Zeta had, had said of him. So now I know, and ever since I've known that, my uh, first I repented to the Lord, I, I apologize, and it shifted my mindset to understand. And so, oh man, it just completely shifted my mindset. And of course, you know that he he walks with um, Jerry Savelle and knows Kenneth Copeland, and I don't typically follow you know either of them um, also, but I've seen the same thing in their lives. Extreme wonderful prosperity but how they're serving the lord and you have to have the right heart and the right renewed mind to see the truth i sure pray what i've shared even right now okay literally as i'm talking i'm asking the lord lord why are you having me share this and i felt his answer come to me not in words just in just a knowing the reason why is because the wealth transfer is very soon to take place. And if you have had bitterness, accusation in your heart towards people such as that, many times it's out of jealousy, let's just be honest, envy, then how can the Lord bless you when your heart is not right? So if you need to, just ask the Lord for forgiveness. Now again, you don't have to believe me, but I have no reason to lie to you. I have heard Kevin Zaid I say it. I have heard Jesse Duplantis say it. Some of you follow um, them both. You can even confirm it if you've heard it yourself. Go ahead and do that for other saints who are going to read the comments. <coughs> but um, all last year, I, I felt led to sow into Jesse Duplantis' ministry faithfully every time because I want to be connected with that the obedience to evangelize the world, and to connect with that anointing of increase. And there are things that God has done in my life that I may not, I may not have testified yet, but I praise God that I haven't lacked, which is very different from many, many years ago when I was working three or four jobs. Anyway, <clears throat> all right, there I said it. So, uh, Hopefully you know by now, despite what you've heard me say, hopefully you understand that God doesn't um, like it when we judge others. So that should be enough. If you love God, you won't judge or criticize. Amen? Take it to him. Okay, Lord. All right, I did as you as you led me, and now let's finish up the word. The word finishes up saying this. Lana says, the Lord showed me that those who linger in the upper room in this new era will carry the breath of God. In this new era, that will bring signs, wonders, and miracles. By the way, that's Acts chapter 2, 22. In this new era, that will bring signs, wonders, and miracles that have never been seen before. You will see it is beginning to rumble. It, it's the fresh commissioning for the new frontier. It is a place of the greatest empowerment, the spirit that has ever been walked in the spirit. Excuse me. <clears throat> it is the place of the greatest empowerment of the spirit that has ever been walked. Lord, I yield myself to you. I know the enemy didn't like me sharing that truth. I yield to you, Father, in Jesus' name. Free flow, continued free flow, so I can finish this word, Lord, in Jesus' name. Ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, the word continues. It's the place of receiving a supernatural boldness. 
that has never been carried before. To go, do, build, say, and obey all the Lord is commanding. The invitation into the upper room is resounding louder than ever for this new apostolic age. Don't get so caught up in this era of opportunity and acceleration that you miss him because he is coming, ready or not. Wow. His goodness, his kindness, his love is beckoning you into the upper room. Shake off all that hinders you from coming into that place. The upper room, the place of revealing, of the revealing of Jesus Christ and his fire is falling. A fresh commissioning. You can't go forward into the new frontiers without it. Thank you, Lord. All right, saints, that was the word. Um, I didn't mean to keep you so long. I pray the word blessed you. Make sure you look in the description to see how you can learn more about Lana Vothra's ministry. I pray you enjoyed this. If so, please hit the like. Please do subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I would love to hear your positive, godly comments regarding the word, as well as what I mentioned, Jesse Duplantis, Kevin Zeta, and so forth. And please know if it's going to be the opposite, I'm not going to entertain it. Your comment would just disappear because I, in this channel, will not only honor the Lord, I will honor others, especially the prophets and servants of the Lord. And I will not allow others to speak badly of them. So if you love the Lord, then you will be in alignment in your thoughts, words, and deeds, even in the comments. Praise God. Love you all. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.